Welcome to the series of videos designed to show you how to simulate a horn-fed reflector antenna using ANSYS HFSS. In this first video, I'll show you how to create the 3D model of a waveguide-fed horn antenna as shown here below. In the top right of your screen, you have instructions just for your reference. The key focus will be on using the ANSYS Electronics Desktop interface as shown here. We'll create the geometry of this waveguide-fed horn antenna the airbox, boundary conditions and excitations, and then create a 3D component that will export ready to be inserted into any HFSS design. Firstly, launch ANSYS Electronics Desktop, as I have done so here. The instructions then invite you to go to Tools, Options, General Options, and set some basic settings. These settings are things like default transparency and how HFSS behaves. I'd like you to do this at your own pace. Now go to Project, Insert HFSS Design. Here you can see you have the Project Manager window, Properties, Modeler Tree, and Main Modeler window as shown. The first step is usually to go to HFSS, Solution Type, and pick your solution type. In this case, we're going to pick a Driven Modal Solution Type to excite a mode of the horn antenna. That is appropriate. Now go to Modeler, Units, and set your default units as inches. Hit OK. Make sure that vacuum is a background material. Now let's draw the feed, which is the waveguide feed into the horn antenna. Let's go to draw box, or you can use any of the shortcuts here in your toolbar by clicking on one of them. Then click in the main window three times. It doesn't matter where you click because this properties window will pop up in order for you to enter your values. So position refers to one of the corners of the box. Our model will be completely parameterized so that we can use these parameters throughout our exercises. Once we enter these parameters, we're prompted to enter their values. For example, horn length will be a length in inches of 5.2. Hit OK. Follow this same step for A and B. Similarly, the X size will be parameterized as a waveguide length of 1 inch. Now we can use these parameters throughout. Hit apply and OK. If you press Ctrl D on your keyboard, you'll see that it zooms to whatever geometries you have. Here we just have a box. Let us double click on box 1 to go to the attribute tab. Rename this as horn. OK. Now this is the waveguide feed to the horn. Let's create the rest of the horn. First, we'll define our grid plane as the YZ plane by going to Modeler, Grid Plane, YZ. Now if I was to draw a 2D surface like a rectangle, then it would draw on this plane. That is exactly what we're going to do. So go to Draw, Rectangle, and Draw a Rectangle. You'll notice that axis says X as the normal to this plane. And here we're going to define the values for a rectangle as shown. Position of 0, minus flare A over 2, and minus flare B over 2. Let us define the values for these properties. Set the Y size as flare A and the Z size as flare B. Hit apply and OK. You'll now notice that you have this rectangle here as well. Now we're going to join this waveguide feed to this rectangle to create our horn antenna. To do so, first we need to enter face selection mode. You can just press F on your keyboard or go to edit select faces. Once you're in face selection mode, 
select this face closer to the larger rectangle. Now we're going to create an object from this face and then connect it to this other rectangle. So we go to Modeler, Surface, Create Object from Face. You should see this new Sheet object as shown. Now we're going to enter Object Selection Mode by pressing O on your keyboard. Go to Edit, Select, By Name. And here you can see the objects that we've got. Horn, Rectangle 1, and this new object, Horn Object from Face 1. Hold Control on your keyboard to select multiple objects. Click OK. While they're still connected, go to Modeler, Surface, Connect. So the selected objects have been connected. Now we select all. And we're going to unite this as one object. So we go to Modeler, Boolean, Unite. And you can see that all these operations still exist, but they're all combined under the one object of Horn. Now we can see what happens if we change values of certain parameters. You can go to HFSS Design Properties to view them, or simply click on the project and see the parameters here. I'd like to invite you to change some of these values and see what happens to your waveguide-fed horn antenna. Now let's create a thickness for this wall by creating a shell for this horn. This is actually one of the coolest parts of this presentation. Go to Edit, Select, Faces and go edit, select by name. Now here, make sure you're in the horn object and we're selecting some of its faces. We're going to select every face other than this aperture opening at the end of the horn antenna, which you can see is that face. You can see what all the other faces are by clicking on them as well. I'm going to click on the first one, select all of them by holding shift and then control on my keyboard to deselect that one face. So now we've selected all the faces other than the end. Hit OK. So now we have these faces selected. Go to Modeler, Surface, Create Object from Face. So now we have a new object or a set of objects. Go to Modeler, Boolean, Unite to make that one object. Now we're going to say Modeler, take this surface and thicken that sheet. Let's parameterize this thickness as wall thickness. Give it the value of 0 0.05 inches as a default. Hit OK, and voila. You should see that you now have a horn antenna with a wall thickness as well. Now we still ha haven't assigned any material, so you can see everything is just a vacuum here. So let's assign some of the materials and rename some of the objects. Go to Edit Select Objects to enter Object Selection Mode. Now here we have horn and horn object from face 2. Let's rename them. The first one, horn, which is the inner one. We're going to call that horn underscore air. And let's make sure its material is vacuum. That's appropriate. Now for the outer wall, let's rename this as horn shell. And make sure this material, if we go edit, is actually set to a perfect conductor. If you were to set it as a metal, that would be appropriate as well, if you had a specific application. But perfect conductor will do for now. Now we're going to draw a region around this air box, which is going to model the air around it and allow the energy to transfer from this horn antenna into the surrounding air up to that radiation boundary. So go to draw region. Here we're going to pad all directions similarly and give it an absolute offset of a parameterized value of 0.4 inches. So we call it rad dist, which is that radius distance. Give it 0.4 and hit OK. You should see this box 0.4 inches in each direction padding the horn antenna. Now with the surrounding region, Let's set a boundary condition to it to say how it will behave. We want absorption rather than reflection of electromagnetic energy, so we're going to give it a finite element boundary integral boundary condition. First, we're going to select region. Just clicking on it here will do the trick. Now go to HFSS, hybrid, assign hybrid, finite element boundary integral. Click OK. And now 
in the project area, you'll notice that you have a hybrid region as shown. Now let's create a waveport excitation at the waveguide end of the horn antenna. Let's go to modeler, grid plane, YZ, in order to create a new rectangle to sit at this end of the waveguide. Go draw, rectangle. Define its parameters as shown in the top right. apply now go to the attribute tab and let's rename this as a waveport w port hit ok you can see where this waveport rectangle is it's not assigned as a port yet just a rectangle to actually assign it as an excitation we go to hfss after having selected it which is the automatic case here after we assign the rectangle go to hfss excitations assign waveport you should see a pop-up window looking a little bit like this one Click next. We don't want to renormalize to 50 ohms, so we click finish. And now we should see under excitations that we have a wave port as defined. Now let's save this project. Save your project as horn parameterized. Click save. Now we're ready, having created all our geometry, to export an object that we can use and insert into any HFSS design. To create this 3D component, we have to select the objects that we want first. So now we'll select everything other than region. So if we go to object selection mode, edit, select by name, and make sure we don't select region, we have selected everything else. Let's export this as a 3D component. Go to draw, 3D component library. If you wanted to bring in a geometry, then you'd go to browse. If you want to export this geometry out, Go to create 3D component. In the pop-up window, which would look a little bit like this one, you can define some of the values that you want and rename this. The instructions invite you to look through the tabs. This is just the information tab. The model, make sure there are only three objects selected. You can see the excitation of the wave port, etc. Hit OK, and you're prompted to enter a file name. Let's call this horn without airbox. save. Similarly, we're going to export an object which includes this region. So if I select that as well, or we select all, and then again go to draw 3D component, create 3D component. This time it's going to be with an airbox. And now we're going to make sure that we've selected all four objects here. Click OK and call this horn with finite element boundary integral boundary. save. Now the last three slides of this presentation are just showing you how to use this in a new project. So say if I had a new project, I open Antis Electronics Desktop and it looked like we had started here as HFSS Design 2. Let's just rename this as a placement test. Make sure the solution type is driven modal and the units are as appropriate once again. Let's go to modeler, units, just change this to inches to be consistent. Now to bring in this geometry, you'd go to draw, 3D component library, browse. You'd find the file that you want to. You should see a pop-up window as shown. Here you can change the parameters immediately as you enter a new geometry into your design. Click OK, just as a default. Here you can see the waveguide fed horn antenna that we just created. Now if we wanted to insert another waveguide fed horn antenna into this project but we didn't want the waveguide side of the horn facing the positive x direction, how could we do that? How could we have two horn antennas completely parameterized as well? well I'm going to show you how to instantiate a working coordinate system. Go to modeler, coordinate system, create, and because we want our new coordinate system to be both an offset 
from the original global coordinate system and rotated. So we'll select both. Now first we select the origin. On your keyboard, if you hold X, Y, or Z, you'll restrict movement to that axis alone. So holding Y, you'd only move along that direction. So hold X, click somewhere along the negative X direction as your origin. Then holding X again, click even further in the negative X direction to indicate the working coordinate system's positive X direction. Then hold Y on your keyboard and go in the negative Y direction and click. And you'll now see that under coordinate systems in the model tree, you have both the global and now relative coordinate system defined. We'll use this as the target coordinate system for another waveguide. First, let's just rename this and call it Horn2. Now, again, we bring in another waveguide fed horn antenna by going to Draw, 3D Component Library, Browse, Find Horn Without Airbox, click Open. Let's just change some of the values to make it seem a little bit different. Hit OK. If you zoom out, you'll see that the next one is facing the other one as we desired. The difference is that one targets the global coordinate system and the second one is targeting the second coordinate system, which we could adjust as we saw fit. Now, how would I parameterize the distance between these two? That's a challenge for you. If you want to watch on, you can see how I would do it. You have all the answers from this presentation alone. This second waveguide fed horn antenna is set by this working coordinate system. So let's parameterize the position of this working coordinate system. Instead of having the origin as minus 4, we could say this as minus horn separation. You'll be prompted to enter what the value of horn separation is. Thank you, Windows. And we would check, make that as a length in inches. Say that's 4 inches and click OK. Nothing moves. Seems like nothing has changed. But if I was to click on placement test, and change the value of this horn separation, you would see that the second waveguide fed horn antenna moves accordingly. During this presentation, we created the rectangular horn antenna from scratch. Two versions have been created and we'll use this throughout the other exercises. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Thank you for watching.